Right then, welcome back to the England One Cap podcast. Uh, we've had a very long break for many reasons. Um, heartbreak at the end of the Euros. Um, I've moved to a new job, but that's not relevant. It's all about heartbreak. Um, and for somehow, talking about England just hasn't felt right. But this is why we're here to talk about the England One Caps on the England One Cap podcast. My name is Rob Prendergast. Your name is? Callum Shaw, and it's great to be back, but we definitely needed the break, I think. It, I, was, um, uh, it was all a bit too much, wasn't it? Um, I It's only this weekend just gone where I thought, I want football back now. But before that, I was really enjoying having a bit of a break from football. Yeah, I definitely agree. But seeing like all the new kits get announced, all the teams having friendlies, it's just get back into it now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, look back with general happiness over the Euros, I think, because it was a cracking tournament. So, you know, put the heartbreak to one side, move on. Qatar yeah, I mean, next year. Let's go. Yeah. I, me, for me, seeing Everton sign three bang average players in the space of an hour and a half, <laughs> I me think, all right, football's back. Here we go. <laughs> the world is healing, finally. Um. Busy week in the one cat world, or busy maybe two weeks. Joey Barton doing Joey Barton things and uh, hitting people who shouldn't be hitting. Such, um, such is Joey Barton. Yeah. Such is Joey Barton. Uh, John Flanagan gone to a Danish team with Daniel <laughs> Agger's manager. Oh, God. John Flanagan. I dislike John Flanagan more than Joey Barton. I've said it. I could get behind that. I mean, one of them has done something a lot worse than what the other's done, so... Well, I, I think they've both done it. If you read the <laughs> well, no, don't get me I, wrong. <laughs> I don't want to say... I don't want to slander them. If I'm going to slander yeah. John Flanagan, I'm going to say he's a fraud and a shit footballer. That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah, we um, won't bring uh, legal issues into it. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. This is... And John Flanagan is my answer to this question. Let's say this goes well. We're, we're smashing it. We've become successful YouTube characters. And everyone on YouTube, what do they do when they get big? YouTube boxing. Okay. One day, YouTube <laughs> boxing event. Me and you, we both have to fight a one cap. I'm having John Flanagan. Who are you going to fight? An England one cap in a boxing match. Who would you choose? Oh, see, I've got to decide here. Do I pick someone with the most entertainment value, but I get absolutely destroyed? Or do I pick someone that I generally think I could stand a chance against? I don't know. Nice to this, by the way. So I want you. Who would I pick? Do you know what? I'd I'd want to I'd want to fight an ex Leeds player. Um, oh. Okay. I would get destroyed, but me and Lee Bowyer, let's have it out. <laughs> <laughs> let's have it out. And I, I actually really like Lee Bowie, so I don't even know what one. But just for the mutual respect, I think I'd want to fight Lee Bowie, but he would absolutely destroy me. He, he's an absolute scrapper, though, isn't he? Yeah. He loves that, it. That uh, Kieran Dyer scrap. Oh, that's too good. <laughs> um, okay, brilliant. Well, we've said it. Let, let, let the people make it happen. John Flanagan, good, Lee Bowie. Where the fuck are you, cunt? Come on. <laughs> um. All right, that's enough about these one caps because we've, we're we're talking about a much more respectable one cap than John Flanagan. This episode, we're talking about yeah. a great, a great, oh, that was great, no, very good football player who goes by the name of Matt Jarvis. Great name, great name. Uh, and, and any middle name at all? Uh, Matthew Thomas Jarvis. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Last episode. I said, oh, I'll tell you by the end if Dean Ashton has a middle name. I didn't say anything, but he doesn't have a middle name, just like me. So, or, well, yeah, it's disappointing, but I mean, Thomas, it's, it's very middle of the road, standard, very English name. Very, very St. George, very, very much back in the empire with a middle name, Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Um, started his career at Gillingham or Gillingham? I always say it wrong. I'm going to go for Gillingham. This uh... Gillingham. I, th- I believe Gillingham is the correct pronunciation. Do you ever have those teams? Um, I know you do. Do you ever? Do you ever sometimes play like the quizzes online, 
right, I'm going to name every club in the Football League. I forget yeah. Gillingham or Stevenage every time I do it. It's one of those two. Uh, <clears throat> I've def- definitely a few I always forget. Um, who do I always forget? In fact, what I've, I always forget Walsall, actually, which is... Mm. One of Matt Jarvis's clubs, uh, as we'll get to. Walsh, I always forget. Jeez. Yeah, there's, there's just a lot. I mean, every time I do it, you're always going to forget different ones that you remembered the last time because it's just impossible to remember 92 teams, whatever it is. 92, 96, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, Gillingham. Bit of a, bit of a weird one because I, I always forget they were actually in the championship. Um, yeah around the time when Matt Jarvis first played for him. Yeah, man. It's um, it, it's weird. It's weird, really. Um, he was at Millwall Academy and then got released when he was very young and then ended up going to Gillingham because of a coach at Millwall, like set him up or something, set him up yeah. to get there. Um, and he only got his first team debut because the whole first team had the flu for his debut. Yes. And then... That's so good. And he just kept his place when he got in the first team. Like... Yeah, I, <clears throat> I obviously think, I don't know if you read this, but Matt Jarvis, obviously very, like, exceptionally talented all round as an athlete, because he was also, like, county champion in, like, swimming and athletics. Oh, yeah, um, yeah I saw that. Yeah, because his, his parents as well are, like, former, like, number one in, like, table tennis. Yeah, they were, they were both world number one table tennis. Apparently, people at Wolves called him the Ping Pong Prince. <laughs> 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 That's great. But yeah, I, I I just get the gist from that with like really sporty parents. He's probably been pushed like quite hard to do well. Yeah, definitely. Um, um but yeah, Gillingham. Um well, got relegated there, didn't they? Um was it 04 05? I think they got relegated. Oh, perhaps. Uh, from the championship. Yeah. Fit, fit, then they got relegated from the championship in 04 05. I mean, he was still very young then, but um I don't think it was it until they were in League One where he really started kind of coming through and started getting a lot of attention from Premier League and Championship clubs. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's, there's not a whole lot out there, Gillingham footage, for us to, no. to, uh, to be reviewing for such a young uh, for a young player, Matt Jarvis. I probably saw him around that age. I think that about so many players now. I think I probably saw him play, play against Yeovil, but... <coughs> I wish I knew at the time what they were going to become. Yeah, I, I do. I do a similar thing. Whenever we go to the cast, I think, oh, I've seen them playing with uh, Cork and Ashton. I know I definitely have for a fact. Matt Jarvis is such a weird one because he's one of those players where I think I must have seen him play against Leeds mm. double digit. But honestly, I'm not even sure I've seen him play against Leeds because it just seems to happen. Whenever we like went into a league where he was at a previous club, he then moved to another club in right. a league above or league below. Yeah. So like Gillingham, I, they're in the championship when we were, but hadn't started going yet. And then they got relegated. Um, and then he moved to Wolves when we got relegated to League One. So I just kind of kept missing him, um, which is weird because he's just the typical player that I would have watched in League One Championship for years. Uh- and by the time he got to the Prem, he was playing in the National League. So he missed, missed his chance yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he goes to Wolves from Gillingham, which um, Nick McCarthy's Wolves. This is quite an interesting squad. It's like, you see on like social media now, squads of that era, uh, era kind of getting like, kind of, I see so much stuff about Blackburn in that era. as being like, oh, yeah. Blackburn had this like cult team. And I was going through the Wolves squad and I'm like, there was nothing better on FIFA than hearing Martin Tyler say Sylvan Ebanks Blake. I guess it was, <laughs> it was just music, you know? Oh, Kevin Doyle great. up top. Yeah, I, I, Ebanks played in the, remember that George Ellicobi at left back as well. George uh, He's another little, another little cult player. Um, yeah, had a proper decent team that Wolves side, wasn't it, for a little while? Yeah, well, um, his first season, they missed out on playoffs by goal difference, which... Has to hurt, but then bounce back, win the next season. Champions. Then, I don't know, three seasons in the Prem after that? Yeah, yeah, I think about three or four. Yeah, three seasons sounds about right, yeah. Um, That's huge. Yeah. um, Yeah, I mean, it was when they came to the Prem that he really took that next big step, didn't he? 
Because, yeah. um, you know, he won, well, I know he was in like um, team of the season in League One. Um, but then, so I know first season at Wolves, he struggled with injury a bit, which would be a bit of a recurring theme throughout his career, especially later on. Um, but when they got to the Prem, you know, really started to shine. Uh, I think he got a couple of personal awards um, one season. can't remember what season that was now. Um, but, yeah, players player of the year, fans player of the year, I'm pretty sure. Well, it, yeah, he was first Wolves player to play for England for, like, 20 years, isn't he? Like, they yeah. loved him. Steve, Steve Ball was the Steve Ball. Yeah. last Wolves player uh, before Matt Jarvis. Um, but, yeah. Well, they mean followed, feet, by, uh, followed by Connor Cody. Connor doing, Cody, yeah. Doing his thing. Illustrious um, line of Wolves English players. <laughs> so, probably not many more to come, let's be honest, without, uh, no, no. without analysing <laughs> nationalities of that squad too much. <laughs> I wonder what it's like for Wolves fans who perhaps saw that whole era, that Matt Jarvis, Matt Jarvis, Mick McCarthy era, these kind of like cult players for them now. And now... Their squad is all Portuguese, Portuguese manager, Portuguese owners. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that's happening to teams more and more now. You know, obviously, back in nights, especially noughties, you look at a lot of English players in teams. Um, but a lot of teams now, obviously, big influence, foreign agents, foreign coaches. Because um, let's be honest, English managers aren't setting the world alight at the minute. So mm-hmm. it's kind of just been a natural progression to... Uh, teams being heavily um, featured with players from abroad. So, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I'm not saying I have a problem with it, but when you, because obviously, like, we, we've these three podcasts, we've talked about football league players, players who come for the league. Like, we love the football league, me and you. That's what we grew up watching. When you get a it player did, yeah. who's from your area, grew up there, and then plays for your team, that you you can't measure that pride. You feel oh. you see that player, then go somewhere else. Like it's 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 another level. Than having... Oh, it's great because like play like you say, players that come through the ranks, they're born, you know, they're born playing for that team, they're born supporting that team, and then they become one of that team's best players. They move on, they stay with whatever. Like Calvin Phillips, my favorite Leeds player, born and bred Leeds. Like I can't not prefer anyone else to Calvin Phillips. Um, so yeah, that's that's just how it works, isn't it? Uh, what a man, by the way, Calvin Phillips. Yeah, I, uh, have to admit, I was one of these people wondering why he was playing, and now I think he's the best footballer in the entire world. Well, you know, just just took one tournament, people realised. I knew they would. I knew they would. It was the uh, Croatia game. I was literally. I think I was messaging you at the time, saying this is the <laughs> best performance I've ever seen in England top. <laughs> I know, there's so much backlash to that team selection as well. And then, oh, <laughs> seems like seems like a long time ago now. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, we're talking about you, Jarvo. Um, Jarvo, Jarvo. So, okay, let's go. Promoted to the championship in 08, 09 season. 09, 010. 15th place. Very respectable for a team. Just... Did, did the job. That's what, that's what newly promoted teams got to do, isn't it? Exactly. And then the knock on the door came. Text on the phone from Michelle at the FA saying, <laughs> you're going to play for the England squad. Um, against Ghana in sometime 2011. Was it March? The March friendlies? Yeah. Yeah, March 2011. Uh, I think we had two games. One was a... Um, World Cup qualifier against Wales, I think. That'd be right. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, one was a qualifier against Wales. He wasn't in. He didn't get played then. And then no. we had a friendly against Ghana, uh, and that was the that was the fateful day. Um, this Ghana game. I'm concerned now because I've realised I've already slandered a man on on this podcast. <laughs> I said the c word, and I've probably alienated my mum and dad. The two. It's half of our fan base. <laughs> like, that game was rigged, right? <laughs> the Carla game. Like, <laughs> have you seen it? Like, we were just so, we were just, 
missing stupid chances and we end up drawing 1-1 and Asamo Jam scores in front of the Garda fans in the last... I don't know, man. And the solid, won, solid dodge, yeah, isn't it? Cafello's a kind of bloke. So he's someone slipped him something there, surely. Honestly, the, why? Why would we possibly play that friendly like halfway through the season? I don't get it. I don't understand. Help me understand. It's so bizarre, especially when you've got um, qualifiers. You know, the game before probably would have been four or five days before. I don't get why there's always this need to play friendlies against, I don't want to say Mickey Mouse nations because Ghana often do quite well in tournaments. You know, they're, they're to bring up another cult uh, kind of team, you know, Ghana are definitely one of those teams. Especially that 2010 World Cup. Yeah. 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 No, that's the other dodgy part. Asimo Jayam was such like a cult hero at the time because I, you know, all the dancing celebrations, he was good at the World Cup. And then he just magically pops up in the ninetieth minute, you know. Yeah, yeah. Les Lescott's kind of, I don't know. You see, he's kind of just <laughs> shielding him, just like that's what I, that's what when I watched it. But I don't know. Yeah. That that could just be Jolie Lescott for you. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Jolie Lescott. I, you know, yeah. I don't want to. I'm I've, I've slagged. I've, I've, I don't know why I'm slagging so many people off. Yeah, we're, we're, we're proper slandering people, apart from Calvin Phillips, obviously. Um, yeah, mate, we'll, we'll reel it in. Back, we'll back to in. Jarvo and all, one all man the crazy gonna, One man I'm not going to slag off, Matt Jarvis. Matt Jarvis. Very much earned uh, his England call-up. He, um, he kind of, um, I don't know, a lot of positions change, don't they, over time in football. And I think wing, wingers have changed quite a bit in the last few years. But he was definitely one of those, like, if you imagine, like, your old coaches when you were younger, it's like, what does a winger do? It's like, oh, you run down the wing, just cross it in. And it's, that was effectively yeah. Matt Jarvis's yeah. career. Get it in box, get it in yeah. box. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, but he was great at it. That's what he did. That's something, like, yeah. how Wolves got most their goals. Like, give it Jarvis on the wing, run down, cross it in, go. Yeah, I think that's something we're really lacking in football at the minute, is that kind of winger. Just like the run down, stand and deliver, left peg. Find someone's head. Uh, Do you think? Um, well, I don't know. Maybe Iron Robin changed the game. The old tucking in, the tucking in winger. Yeah, cutting inside, bending one in the top corner, uh, which is great to watch. And to be fair, um, the only example I can think of right now, Jack Harrison at Leeds is very much left wing, left foot, stand and deliver. And it's great to see because you create so many chances from it. Um, and that's obviously what Matt Jarvis brought to the table. Um, if you're if you're putting in that many crosses, you're eventually going to score goals. You know. You think um, oh, maybe in, if he was playing now, and actually, especially if he was still at Wolves, it might be it might be a player's wing back now. I think. Don't oh think? yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, he definitely have the pace to be a wing back. Definitely have the fitness. So yeah, he he would have fit perfectly left wing back. Absolutely. Yeah, I fully, I fully see that. And especially that, that's the way the kind of wingers have changed, isn't it? It's kind of fullbacks are doing a lot of the things the old like, attacking wingers would do. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame for those old school wingers because, yeah, like you say, they are now playing as wing backs. Like you see so many wingers who 10 years ago would have been playing on the wing every game and now they're playing left back and right back when they've got to fill in. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a shame for them, but, you know, Football changes. That's what it does. As it should do. Um, and so Matt Jarvis comes on the 70th minute of this game against Ghana, which at the time at the time was 1-0 uh, prior to the dodgy goal. Um, and if anyone could find any highlights about him playing in, in the England shirt, that'd be great. But <laughs> we, it seems as if he's had the quietest England game ever. <laughs> I know, right? As, you know, he's, he's played for 20 minutes. We've conceded a goal in the last minute. I didn't see him touch a ball when I rewatched the game. So yeah, I mean, he, he was probably there to do his old run down the wing, cross it in. But and Andy Carroll had already got his one goal, his 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 gamely quota. He don't I don't like to get any more. So <laughs> that wasn't work. yeah, I mean, we've probably done Matt Jarvis dirty because we had Stephen Corker. Who, scored on his England debut 
you know, Dean Ashton played a whole half and had a very tragic tale and of getting there. And now it's just someone who's played 20 minutes, barely touched the ball. It feels a bit of a disservice to him, but yeah, it's just sometimes how it goes, isn't it? No, no, I don't. I'm not. I think he, he had his place there, but I just, I don't know. You Like I said, it was there was a qualifier before that. Give him the qualifier. You know, don't yeah. give him 20 minutes end of a friendly. I don't, because no, he could have, I, I he could get... have gone out off to Ireland then <clears throat> after that. No, all, all, all the best do. But um, yeah, it's it's a shame because him playing 20 minutes against Ghana benefits nobody. Nobody gets a benefit. I mean, I'm sure he can look back now and say, oh, I played a game for England, great. But, you know, he would have he would have, he would have much rather played 20 minutes against Wales in a qualifier. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I do sometimes wonder about one caps, like what 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 the psychological effect is of when you play once let's say you played once 20 minutes and they were like ah no nah, it's not good enough we're not going to play you again and he's like well how yeah. what more could i have done you know that must it must like hurt there's, obviously there's pride yeah, i've never really thought of it like that but yeah i, I suppose it's different for every player because some players will be very lucky to get that one cap but yeah like you say others who have like built their way up earned their spot they're in the prime of their life and then, yeah, in Matt Jarvis' place, you play 20 minutes, you never get called back. Yeah, see, I, yeah I, I never thought of that. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely must knock his confidence a bit, surely. Because it... I don't know. He did, I don't think he got a fair chat. There's some players. I won't say, I won't say their names because I don't want to spoil the reveal for later <laughs> episodes. Plus, I'll end up saying bad things about him, probably. But some, some players <laughs> have played literally like... A few, that England career is like a few minutes long. They get one game, they play a few minutes, and then they don't play again. And it's like, what? Why? Surely everyone yeah. should be getting a half, you know? Unless you're a striker, maybe free a spare striker, but you should be getting a half at least to actually be able to prove yourself. Yeah, well, that, that's the other thing. Like, he's played 20 minutes. It's very hard for a player to prove himself and make an impact in 20 minutes in a dead rubber friendly. But like, I'm not sure how you're meant to impress someone in that time. No, it doesn't really make sense to me, but. No, it doesn't make sense. But we ain't taking any, anything away from the bloke. Yeah, that call cool about Matt. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Um, so that was 2011. Had one more season at Wolves. Um, yes, one more season at Wolves. And things did not go yeah. very well that year. That was the season they finished bottom. Yeah. I think surprisingly, it was Matt Jarvis's best ever season, I think. I think, what, I think, what think goals, so, yeah. Yeah, and a fair few assists, yeah. Um, well, yeah, because obviously after that season, he earned himself a move away yeah. to Just, stay in the Prem. So. Um, they sacked, this, Wolf sacked Mick McCarthy that year in like Feb. Didn't win, I remember, yeah. didn't win another game for the rest of the season. Do you remember, do you remember how smug Mick was when he left Ipswich and they got relegated? I just, I just hope yeah. he was just watching every Wolves game, just laughing. He would, he would have been though, because oh, clubs, they never realise when, when you're an average mid to bottom table side in whatever league you're in, and have all the fans are, oh, we need this manager out, it's rubbish. Yeah. So many don't realise that if they get rid of that person, you are going to go down. Yeah. Like, especially with someone like Mick McCarthy, like the experience he's got. Like you, you know, you're right in your own death note at that point. Yeah, a guy won the championship and then kept you up, and then yeah, you know the Chris Hooten effect. Everyone, yeah, everyone loves. Everyone wants Chris to get promoted, but then they don't want to keep him around afterwards. And I, yeah, I know. That's never gonna go. That's never gonna go. That's always gonna be around. Um, yeah, it is. Unfortunately, so we'll finish dead bottom. Uh, he jumps ship. To West Ham United, where yes. um, in a time, well, I'm not even saying this period is necessarily gone, but West Ham have had their recruitment hasn't always been amazing. They've brought players which with no like kind of real philosophy of how these players are going to play together. It was like, oh, Sammy Nasser yeah. is a free agent. Oh, yeah, we'll get him over. Ever? Okay. Like, you know, like, how, is, <laughs> how are you going to put these all together? Uh, yeah. And it kind of felt like that a bit of, with Jarvo a bit. I felt he didn't really hit his groove. No, because 
yeah, back to the point of always missing Matt Jarvis from earlier as well. Um, West Ham got promoted that season. Um, where, so, like, Wolves went down, West Ham went up. Uh, so, once again, I missed out on the chance to watch Matt Jarvis play because <laughs> uh, as Wolves went down, he stayed in the Prem. Um, but, yeah, massive move from West Ham, though. And I want to say, I'm not sure if it was a record for Wolves selling a player or West Ham buying a player, but it definitely was a club record of some... Oh. So I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, I thought it was seven and a half million. But I don't set, know. It was seven and a half rising to 10.25 or something like that. Right. Um, yeah, which when I saw it was a club record, I thought, I know it was still fairly early on in the 2010s, but I thought that seemed a bit low for a club record at that time. But um, that's. Yeah. Well, that oh oh, that's got to be, I don't know, highest received, because who else would have got that much money as a Wolves player? That's what I thought. I wish I, I wish I looked this further now, because I was really confused when I was reading about it. Um, but then I thought I did think West Ham spent a lot of the two thousands in and out of the championship uh, with not a lot of money. So there is a potential that it was West Ham's um, record mm. transfer. Potentially, I, I think there's a good chance. Did they? What was the? What happened to Tevez and Mascherano again? Was that did they paid for them? Oh, or... that, no, 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 no. They were they were like free transfers essentially. I think I'm not. I'm I'm not sure. The details were so murky and dark. it was <laughs> proper shady business, and I, wasn't it? And I just remember because it, it screwed over. Obviously, all the teams got relegated below them. And Sheffield United were especially very angry when Neil Warnock was manager. I reckon Neil Warnock has still not let that go to this day. He, <laughs> he, I bet he just mutters away to himself. Oh, bloody tennis. <laughs> and now and then about the day. Do you reckon we'll ever get through a podcast without mentioning Neil Warnock? Because I don't think we I, I really hope not. I don't uh, really mean oh, you can't have a conversation without bringing up Warnock. We actually can't. Not at the minute, can we? <laughs> oh, he's just such a quotable guy. He's, oh, he's so funny. <laughs> um, I'm not going down that one. Warnock won't help. We'll never, we'll never get out no, of it. Not, not um, enough time for that. <laughs> um, so, West Ham, I can't really um, say much noteworthy about being at West Ham. I really wish I could. But I can't. Yeah, it's a weird one because in my head I was like, he, he played a lot of games for West Ham, but he really didn't like barely any. Uh, Seventy-eight league games. That's oh, it's it's not horrific then. Oh, not not too bad then. It's actually more than I thought. I I just assumed he was yeah. just a bit of a bench player. Um, yeah, but in my head I thought he might just be a hundred apps from, but I saw he's a bit less. So yeah, to be fair, maybe that is about right. Um, I think it's probably his next move where I thought he played a hell of a lot more than he actually did. Norwich. Um, yeah, when he went to Norwich, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, loan initially, wasn't it? Yeah, five games on loan, and then he played 14 when he was originally there. I thought he had like a full season there, like, yeah. a, like playing every game that season. Yeah, but so did I. Probably not. It's actually, um, I don't know, it's quite... There, there doesn't seem to be any real reason. He had a few injuries, but it seems like quite a sad end to his career because he just sort of slipped away quite quickly through the. I, I like it when a player drifts through the leagues. Like when, yeah, I don't know when uh, I remember seeing Kevin Davis play against Yeovil. I think went to Preston, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I love Kevin Davis. So like, but yeah, with Jarvo, it just feels a bit sad because he dropped like all the way down like a few oh, seasons no. after. He like you say, yeah. He's really instant the climb wasn't it because even Norwich at the time like still a good move for him um yeah from West yeah, Ham like he was never he was never going to play any better than West Ham at that point uh injuries started to creep in um so you think Norwich good move it'll do well there their type of player and yeah it just never worked out for one reason or another um but yeah poor Java um, leaves there and goes to Warsaw it seems like at this point of his career, I don't know, if you took out the last last two teams and put Gillingham there, like he went back to Gillingham, it would make sense, you know. But I don't, Definitely. I don't understand. Like, was he was he struggling to find a club at this point? Plays goes to Walsall, 
plays nine games a season, probably injured, wasn't he? Well, not, yeah. not fit yeah. enough to play every game. Is it is one of those moments, you know, where there's a player who's like around the top flight for like five or six years and then you just see them, you're watching Soccer Saturday one day and you just hear the name Matt Jarvis mentioned for some random league <laughs> once you're like, yeah, what's, how's that happened? I, I, I remember thinking that with Jarvis, like, he's a Walsall, I can't believe it. Yeah, um, in in the football league, if the other team have a player like that, they get abused so much, don't they? <laughs> yeah. It must be so hard going up and down the country, just getting abused only because you once played in the Premier League. Yeah. I've some really, it used to really make me worry uh, when I was like watching Leeds in the lower leagues. Like you see this old Prem player who all of a sudden plays for this mid-table team. Like, what the hell have they managed that? Until t- you actually play them and you realise that they sit on the bench, come on for 20 minutes and they're far past their best. It's like, oh my God, he used to play in the Prem. He's like, yeah, because he's 39 now. So don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, nine games, Walsall. Nothing to say. Nothing to say about it. What even is... I mean, also one of your forgotten teams from earlier. So there we go. Uh, an even more forgettable team, Woking, is Woking. Where he then went to spend his final season. Um, his career started because of the flu, and then he ended during COVID. Uh, that's that, that's the circle life in action there. It's isn't circle it? life. He, he, that guy loves a new persistent cough, doesn't he? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, playing quite a few games, 23 games. I mean, probably didn't have the uh, well le- less abuse because there wasn't any fans that season, so he was he got that yeah. out, out of the way. Um, and probably just the lower standard of football. I mean, played you played you over twice that season. He was on the bench and didn't play, so he got off lightly with that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> for like a player that's played at his level, I know he would have been only 33, 34 when he first went to Woking. Like, he's, he's quite young to be in the conference, really. Um, you know, especially, like we know, very athletic upbringing, probably a very fit player. You'd expect him to still be in around the championship at that age. Mm. Um, but yeah, but as we said, maybe that's more, again, a sign of uh, what we were saying about the wingers before. Probably just no room for him yeah, at the maybe minute. That's it. In the championship, maybe that's just the death of the English winger. You know, yeah. Woking, Woking is the death of the English winger. I, uh, I think of Prince Andrew every time I hear Woking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. It's impossible not to. Prince Andrew and now Matt Jarvis. Not that there's anything <laughs> similar about. Yeah, anyway. Um. So <laughs> I. I when he went to Woken, I was like, oh, he must be like player manager or something. You know, that's what I thought. And I saw him. Oh, he's going to get to be a coach at the end. And I was just gone. So, yeah. I'm retired. Um, I'm retired. Only 35, which is, I think that's, I think that's young in this, this day and age, really. I think probably be a bit disappointed he didn't get three or four more years out. But, um, yeah. I mean, We've we've touched on the, like the financial side of it in the last couple of episodes. Maybe um, I'm not quite sure what he does now, but maybe he didn't want to graft the national league for money. Really, you know? For, yeah. For a few years. I mean, if he if he doesn't need the money, I'm sure if he potentially needed the money, he'd have stayed around a bit longer. But maybe he doesn't. So hopefully not. Um, well, that's most of his playing career. Have you seen he once appeared on the front cover of Attitude magazine, a gay, at least yeah. a gay men's health magazine? Yeah, um, I did read that. Yeah. It's really cool, mate. I was reading the article and he's like speaking about, about he's a straight, he's, he's, he's straight by the way, he's married, but like he was talking about um, homosexuality in football. And I, I don't know, I, I kind of wish I hadn't read that like 10 years after it happened because. It seems like yeah. quite an important piece, and there isn't really a whole lot like that that I've read. But uh, made me respect him a lot to have have a player outspoken like that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, we definitely need um, we need footballers, um, regardless of their sexuality, to come out, and they need to normalise, yeah, you know, being a gay man playing football because 
you know, we're all people, we're all footballers. Well, we're not, but they are. I wish we were, but we're not. <laughs> Mighty Schalke, they'll sign me up in this league of two. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I say. They probably need the players at the minute. Um, what's sweet about Matt Jarvis is when he was at uh, Gillingham, oh, Gillingham, Gillingham, my dad will watch this and be like, because every time I've ever said this team, he's corrected me. And I always forget which one it is. <laughs> Gillingham. Um, Gillingham. Dillingham, when he when he played for them, they 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 were saying at the time, oh, he's going to play for England one day. And he found he even said to his coaches, yeah. like, I'm going to play for England one day. And he, he did it. So that is just, I love stuff like that. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> that's great. Um, yeah, M- must be nice as a coach as well when you like train that player up and like you put so much faith in them one day playing for England. Like, I'm sure, it's all you want as a coach at that level, really. Um, yeah. So yeah, great for them. We said it earlier. When you when when a player from your club goes on to play for England, it is immeasurable the amount of pride, the pride you feel. Absolutely. As a player. Yeah. Um, been a while for me, but uh, one day. <laughs> um, one day. I'll end on two notes. One, I'm okay. I'm bang average at FIFA. I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Never been you're good there, at three. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, never been good at free kicks. Never been able to score them. Yeah, that's my weak point. About 10 years ago, I scored a free kick against my brother with Matt Jarvis, and it was so good that I saved it on the PS3. I haven't got my PS3 here. It's at, it's at my brother's. Oh, well. I thought, I thought that was going to be a big reveal. So. No, but, uh, there Run will be. Place. I am going to get it, <laughs> that free kick, and it's going to go on our Instagram page. I think, I don't know, whenever I take a free kick on FIFA, I'm like, oh, do you remember that free kick I scored? I'm like, it's in my head. And I'm like, <laughs> and, uh, that's, not, that's not few and free. But, uh... it, literally, there's been so few in the last 10 years. I still think about that one. But it brings me immense joy thinking about it. So, Jarvo, thank you for that. Um, Right, let's wrap it up in a nice bow, cow. Because I ask you, I ask you yeah. this question for every podcast, don't I? The big, the big, big question. Matt Jarvis, do you think he was lucky to get his England cap? That he only deserved the one, or that he was a player who should have played more times for England? Um. Okay, I definitely. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. I'm not. I normally like to be quite positive and say that these players definitely deserve more, they deserve a cap. I don't think Matt Jarvis should have played more times for England. Personally, I don't think he was that great. I mean, we didn't have a great team at the time, so I'll potentially say he deserved his he deserved his one cap. You know, 100% deserved it, playing well at the time. We weren't blessed with a lot of great wingers in that period. So deserved the one cap, but Leave it at that. No more. Just how we like them. Well, One cap. It's very controversial, but I, I respect it. I am going to disagree with you. And I am going to say Jarvo deserved some more caps in there. Um, one, I don't think he had enough. I don't think he was given enough of a chance to prove himself. That's true. Secondly, um, our, our, our free kicks in the world, in the Euros maybe let us down a little bit. And as we know, that boy can take a fucking good free kick. So I'm going to back him. To, uh, and I, as a man who stuck 10 quid on James Ward-Prowse to get in the England squad for the Euros, uh, I will would say should have brought Jarvis along to bang in some free kicks for us. Yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel there's a bit of bias behind that decision due to that one fateful free kick many years ago. Baby, you, on, haven't on a seen, game you haven't seen the free kick. I'll show you. <laughs> I can't wait for this now. Okay, that's a great place to end. Um, yeah. If you've enjoyed it, which you probably have, because you know, making good content, aren't we? Um, give it a like, subscribe on YouTube. I think that would be the most helpful thing. Um, yeah, definitely. Be a big, be a massive company who wants to sponsor us and pay us to do it. That would be helpful. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll give you adverts and everything. Yeah, literally. Um, if you ever scored a free kick on FIFA, Matt Jarvis, send it over here. We'll give send it a watch. In. Yeah. Um, apologies for the delay in this coming out. It's been a long break, but 
we're back, we're cooking, and there's been more England One Cup goodness coming your way very soon. Uh, right, that's all. Bye from me. Anything to say, Callum? No, nope, no, nope, no cheap plugs at all. Just uh, thanks everyone for watching, and uh, yeah, look forward to the next one, whenever that may be. Very soon. I hope. Very, very, very soon. soon. Right. Thank you all for listening. We'll we'll be with you soon.